Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. This video is a continuation of the last video where you saw me make these flower coasters. Now this is a requested video on how to sand and top coat your resin. Well, it's more like how do I sand and top coat my resin because everyone is so different and you will find your own way of doing it and that will be your preferred way. So the main reason you would top coat your items really is if there's any imperfections on the surface, if you've got those minute bubbles on the surface, or if you wanted them to be heat proof. If you are selling your products, if you're selling your coasters as heat proof, able to take a hot drink, then you really need to top coat them with a heat proof resin. Not all resins are heat proof. Honestly, I would recommend resins that can take over 100 degrees if you're gonna sell them on. Another bit of advice would be, if you are top coating your resin to sell it as a heat proof coaster, you really wanna hold on to it for three weeks before you place heat on top. This is something that resin companies recommend. And also if you're selling it to a customer before that period, put a note in there, let them know not to put a hot drink on the surface for at least three weeks after they've received the product. Another reason why resin companies recommend you put a top coat of clear resin on your coasters if you're selling them on as heat proof is because anything you put into your resin, whether it's dyes, mica powders, inks, pigment pastes, anything like that can have a detrimental effect on the heat proofness of the resin. So if I was just going to make maybe four plain blue coasters that would no longer be that heat proof because the mic is in there so you really want to get your heat proof resin and put a top coat on just for added safety okay on to sanding i am a recent i am a recent believer in sanding if you've watched any of my previous videos i've always said no i don't sand i don't feel the need to sand and honestly the resin takes the takes the top coat quite happily without the need to sand in between however after speaking to a couple of fellow crafters, fellow resin artists, they really did convince me the reason for sanding. And that reason is, A, it produces a better finish, and B, it actually grips. The resin that you're putting on top, the top coat grips better if the surface underneath is sanded. Honestly, guys, I was just lazy. I was like, ugh, can't be bothered to sand. It's just so much aggravation. But again, if you are selling your product, it really is the best route to go. When you top coat, sometimes you will see the resin pulls in from the edges. And this is really common. I've had this happen so, so many times. You really want to pour enough so that it goes to the edges and stays at the edges. But if you sand first, it will do that because it's got a grippy surface to cling onto and it's less likely to pull away from the edges and come back into the center of your piece. Okay, how do I sand? Now, there's a few ways of sanding. Everyone will be doing it differently, but for me, I use wet dry sandpaper. You can find this on Amazon. It will be linked down below. This is waterproof sandpaper. I prefer this because I'm sanding indoors. The water will keep the dust down. If you want to use a big hand sander, if you've got a massive piece, a massive tabletop, something like that, you really wanna do it outside or in a huge working space and you want to make sure you've got your respirator on, your glasses, everything. You want to make sure you're fully protected. I'm wearing my gloves. I will be putting my mask on for when the time comes to sand. Because I'm doing it indoors, I'm using a waterproof sandpaper. This is going to keep the dust to a minimal. So I'm just going to add some water into the middle of this and start sanding. Now, what grit you use is entirely up to you and what you're using it for. Now, if you've got a massive project on the go and you really need to get that surface off, you really wanna start with a much lower grit. This is a 1200 grit because I really just want to scratch the surface enough to take a top coat. I don't wanna take away any air bubbles. I'm not trying to take away any imperfections or blemishes. I really just wanna scratch the surface. So for me, this 1200 grit is gonna work perfectly. If you've got really bad air bubbles that you really want to get rid of, you, you have to take some resin off. So you want to go much lower. You could even start with 100 grit, 120 or 240 and start that low and then work your way up to a much finer grit like a 1200 or even a 2000. If you wanted to, you could go all the way up to 10,000 even more grit. You won't even need a top coat at that point because the 10,000 grit will actually make it shine 
yeah, <laughs> like a diamond. So the grit you use is really up to you. I'm just letting you know for real simple cosmetic purposes, I'm using a 1200 wet dryer. Seen, I have seen people drill down into their resin to release air and that is also something you can do and yeah, so much can be done. So right here you can see the difference between one that has been sanded and one that hasn't been sanded and honestly you can even get this to be way more opaque to the point where you cannot see anything inside and the resin will still bring it back to life. I've only given these a light sand you can see here it's just really really foggy it's got like a yeah a sanded surface really um, and this is one that has not been sanded so you can see the difference there so the next thing I'm going to do is sand all four and then we're going to give them a protective back coat after I finished sanding them all I just gave them a wipe down with a wet wipe um, and it, it does make it look like the, the, the brightness is coming back but the brightness does not stay and then I make sure that I give them all a thorough dry with some paper towel and especially the back because the back is what we are working on next so another question I've had is why why do we seal the back we seal the back to protect the back from any resin resin sticks to resin now I I do try my best to keep the resin not going over the edge and we know that resin never goes where resins never been sometimes my surfaces are not flat that's another thing you need. Um, very rare in this house do we get a flat surface. But if some does go over the edge, I will know that I've protected the back and therefore the resin will not drip over the side and travel underneath. Resin doesn't drip over the side and drip off because resin likes to play with us that way. So resin will spill over the side really slowly, sit here, travel a little way inland, and end up around about here on your coaster you will end up with drips all the way around if you do not protect your backs that will mean another half an hour to an hour of trying to sand those off because resin sticks to resin what can we use to protect the backs that is entirely and utterly up to you guys i do prefer liquid latex this stuff smells so bad but it is a dream to work with and I have never had a problem using liquid latex on the back. Lots of people recommended that I try PVA glue, I tried it, I still prefer latex. So again it's up to you guys to try the method that you prefer the best. If this coaster was square or a really easy shape I would use masking tape and simply cut away the edges but the edge on this there's absolutely no way I'm going to use masking tape because that will take me probably half an hour just to cut the excess tape off. This is the liquid latex I use. It is linked down below. It was quite a big bottle and I think it was about 17 or 18 pounds. So not cheap. There are cheaper out there, but this is so huge. I feel like it's going to last me quite a long time. All I'm going to do, pour some onto here, make sure it goes to all of the edges and I'm filling this space. I'm not leaving any gaps, just in case. So when you saw on the screen earlier, I said that latex is easy to control. It doesn't self-level or spread, which means it would just sit there. It's, it's not going to move until I move it, which makes it really, really easy to push it to the edges. It doesn't go over the edges. Like, I'm not even being particularly careful. It's just so good. It behaves so well because it doesn't spread. And the air bubbles are there because I gave the bottle a shake, but I'm really not concerned about the air bubbles. It won't take away the effect that the latex is going to have. So yeah, I fully recommend it. Everyone has got something that they love to work with, so you just have to find your own your own thing. But yeah, latex. <laughs> I just carry on I do all four I'm not going to show you all four because that's going to be incredibly boring but we do cut to a clip now where we see all four done and then it's just a case of waiting until they dry so this is four hours later the latex is dry and I've raised all the coasters up off the table you don't want them resting flat on a surface you want them raised they are all sitting on plastic cups and this is where the magic happens <sighs> oh I just love this part. I absolutely love this part. Seeing everything underneath come to life again is the best moment. The bubbles will be torched out so we can all see thousands of bubbles here but they will be torched. 
and I'm going to get poetic and let you enjoy the rest before I talk again. Okay, that's enough. I really just don't want you guys all falling asleep on me. So <laughs> check me out with my with my music and film skills. I got quite good that day. Um, yeah. So next step, all you want to do is pour the resin into the center of your piece. Don't try to even pour it near the edge because what will happen that I've covered in a previous top coating video, it will just pour off the edge. You want it in the center, allow it to run out by itself and if you can see that it's running too fast, you need to try to slow it down. The trick is, don't put too much in the middle. Put some in the middle, ease it out to the edges. This is what you see me doing here. I'm just using my silicon stick and I also use a lollipop stick just to tease it out to the edges and allow it to stay there before you really kind of move on slowly does it that's the key and i i have had messages from people saying i've tried what you i've tried what you said but it's still flying off my only advice there would be either you've poured too much your resin is way too runny let your resin sit for longer or your surfaces are severely not flat my surfaces are not flat guys if i put a spirit level they are off they are not massively massively off but they are not a hundred percent ideal the point is if you go slowly, really slowly, and you don't pour too much, the resin doesn't go off the edge. Now, I don't know at this point, I'm doing this voiceover before I've even checked the results today. I don't know if any resin has gone off of the edge of mine. Um, but I do know that I, I tried really hard on these ones, guys, to, to get that resin to stop at the edges. So after I have got the resin to the edges and I'm quite happy, I go ahead and torch them. What you do need when you torch them is gas. <laughs> I'd run out of gas. So yeah, there's a bit of a pause here where I go and <laughs> fill it back up. Look at this. <laughs> Using the dregs, honestly. What a shocker. Now I'm full of gas. So now I can actually go and um, torch the top. And I can already see dimples occurring. So I go in just into the center and I add a little bit more resin, but not too much. And hope and pray that that does not push the rest over the edge. I go on to do the same with all of the coasters. They are on plastic cups. Now the silicon is almost sticking to the plastic cups, which really gives me this handy platform to be able to spin the coaster around, knowing that that coaster is not going anywhere because the plastic and the silicon have created a really strong bond. And yeah, I was I was really, really happy that this had happened. It was unintentional, but it was it was just one of those things. Now I don't know if you can see here, I'm using the lollipop stick, but I'm pulling into the center of the resin, into the center of the coaster. So I'm tapping the edge, pulling it back into the center. Can you see that? And I'm doing that over and over and over. If you pull it out, then you're going to create a channel for that resin to drip off. And yeah, it really worked really, really well. And I'm happy at this point, it's got like a dome on there. If you don't want this doming effect, then of course you can do a flood coat or you can put less on. I would just be careful putting less on. You've got a chance that it will drag away from the edges. In this one, you see, see that? Oh, Claire, honestly. Now... I got my lollipop stick 
from the cup to go and start spreading this out of course it dripped it dripped but it dripped in the most awkward place because that then created a channel on the coaster over the edge for that resin to run off if you've seen my last video on top coating I didn't do both in one video I just did top coating I didn't do sanding and top coating if there's a channel for your resin to run off it will run off which is why you really don't want to touch the edges you don't want what I just did there you want to make sure that is wiped completely dry otherwise the resin will just follow it off the cliff literally dive straight off the edge of the coaster so I needed to make sure that where I just dripped that was utterly dry before I carried on and I'm just doing the same thing again so I'm just turning the cup with my left hand using the lollipop stick with my right hand and just making sure all of those edges are covered and that is it guys it's a case of going slowly torching everything got a good torch to get rid of those air bubbles and yeah slowly does it I can't emphasize that enough if your resin is too runny let it sit for 10 minutes let it thicken up if your surfaces are severely uneven even the thickest resin will run off so it's just perseverance check your methods and hopefully yeah it will work for you but we're gonna come back 24 hours time and peel that latex off so here I am back to peel the backs off now this has not been 24 hours this has only been I wanna say 12 hours 13 hours since I poured the top coat now the top coat is set but there's a danger for fingerprints so you want to make sure you're wearing your gloves the only reason I'm doing it so soon is because this has been a two three day video so <laughs> I haven't got the time to wait any longer because it's due out tonight so <laughs> there you go secrets behind the scenes but yeah I've got my gloves on and I'm gonna avoid touching the top so that I do not get any marks on there it is fairly set but you just need to be careful what I'm doing at this point is just using my lollipop stick to peel off the latex I was so impressed the first one I looked at had absolutely no drip offs I was so happy probably my best top coating job to date and there is the latex um, the second one I already knew this had dripped off because I could see some on the um, shower curtain that I use so I was just waiting to see what the damage was underneath and it was just one little drop so yeah again happy with that sometimes I'm not so lucky if one drop drops off then the rest drop off you know what I mean and I end up with a cascade of drips underneath but the latex takes this off like a dream right like that it's absolutely just the best for me honestly and it's nice and thick which is what I like about latex the third one again I got one single drip impressed with my skills I'm not gonna lie this is the best top coating I've done ever and that's probably because I was filming it I'm not gonna lie I was going super super slowly but there there you go really easy to come off no issues at all or whatsoever the final one not a single drip so I was again 50% on it this time <laughs> only 50% went wrong but it didn't go too wrong you know and that's what the latex is for so here you go a little bit of peeling ASMR Ooh. <laughs> I feel like singing a bit of Barry White at this moment but I won't and there you go and there you go I hope this video it is a long one guys it's 19 minutes long so if you've made it this far congratulations you're amazing and thank you so much I am going to finish these coasters off with some rubber feet I'm not going to do it just yet but these are the dots I use and I'm going to put some feet on each coaster in about two days time and uh, yeah everything is linked down below including the feet and I hope you've loved it I am really happy with the way these turned out I'm happy I took my time I'm happy I went slowly and I only got two drip offs so if you've lasted this long you're amazing thank you so much for everything and I will see you all in the next video bye